Good day, this is Teacher Riza, and this is our lesson 4.3 for fourth quarter in statistics and probability hypothesis testing. With learning competencies, illustrates null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, level of significance, rejection region, and types of error in hypothesis testing. And identifies the parameter to be tested given a real life problem. In our previous lesson, we have learned that the sample mean and proportion are point estimates in determining the confidence interval in the Z and T distribution, which can be used in solving problems related to real-life situations. In this lesson, you're going to perform the steps in making decision and drawing conclusions from the result of the data obtained in hypothesis testing. So the heart of statistics is the creation of inferences or meaningful generalization about a given set of data or population. Valid inferences can be made using only the observations from the samples. So before we start, let's define some definition of terms. That is hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is the process of making generalizations about the characteristics of the entire population through sample statistics. And the hypothesis is a tentative press supposition or an inference made in order to predict the occurrence of a phenomenon. Statistical hypothesis is a claim about the value of population parameter or about the values of a several population parameters. Then we have steps in hypothesis testing. The first one is you're going to state the hypothesis to be tested. And second step, you're going to set the standard that describes whether the claim is true or not. Third, compute the test statistics. And fourth, make the decision. So these are the four steps in hypothesis testing. What is an null hypothesis? It is a statement of the value to which the population parameter equal and which is presumed to be true. We denoted that as H sub O, which is a null hypothesis. It is a statement that there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value. An example for this is the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school students is 5. Null hypothesis for this is the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high student is equal to 5. While alternative hypothesis is the assertion that contradicts the null hypothesis, we denoted that H sub A which means alternative hypothesis. It describes the population parameter differs from the population parameter predicted in the null hypothesis. Example, the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school student is 5. Where in the null hypothesis for this is the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school student is equal to 5. And we have the alternative hypothesis for that is the mean of the number of sleep of senior high school student is not equal to 5. So we use the word not equal as an alternative to the null hypothesis which is equal. Another example for this is the mean general weighted average of college student in ISU is 84.8 which is a null hypothesis. Wherein, the null hypothesis here is the mean general weighted average of college student in ISU is 84.8. And our alternative hypothesis for this is the mean general weighted average of college student in ISU is not equal to 84.8. So therefore, we use the word not equal as an alternative to the word use is or which means equal to the null hypothesis. Another is, alternative hypothesis for that is the mean general weighted average of college students in ISU is greater than 84.8. For this time, we use the word greater than as an alternative for the null hypothesis which is 
another, we have alternative hypothesis the mean GWA of college student in ISU is less than 84.8. So we use the word less than as alternative to the null hypothesis is 84.8. So therefore, we can use the word not equal greater than less than as an alternative to null hypothesis. Remember that the design of the hypothesis test can either be one-tailed or two-tailed. We have the non-directional test as the two-tailed test, which is the standard test used in many researches, and it compares the population parameter in both directions of the normal curve. An example for this, the alternative hypothesis the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school student is not equal to 5, which is a non-directional hypothesis because of the word not equal. Directional test is also the one-tailed test. It is a test that determines the relationship between the variables in only one direction. It's either to the right, which is a right-tailed, or to the left, which is a left tail. An example for this is the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school students is greater than five. That is a right tail. And the mean number of hours of sleep of senior high school students is less than five, which is a left tail because of the word less than. And for greater than is right. Directional versus non-directional. For one tailed, if the null hypothesis is the population mean is equal, we use the, word, the symbol equal, then alternative for this we can use not equal, which is a left tailed, and also we can use a less than, which is a left tailed, and greater than, which is a right tailed. And for another, for alternative, or for the null hypothesis, greater than or equal, we can make use of the word or symbol less than as an alternative, which is a left tailed. So that is a one tailed. And if the null hypothesis is less than equal, then we can make use as an alternative the symbol greater than, which is a right tailed. For two tailed, for the population mean equal, so, the alternative will be only not equal. So, that is a two-tailed, which is a non-directional. An example, given the null hypothesis, the mean age of patients of Kauai District Hospital is equal to 26. So, state the alternative hypothesis if the test is a right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed. Under right-tailed, the null hypothesis, the mean age of patients of CDH is equal to 26. So we use the symbol equal here. Alternative hypothesis for this is the mean age of the patients of CDH is greater than 26. Or we can use the symbol greater than 26. The population is greater than 26. That is right tail because of the word greater than. Under left tail, so... The alternative hypothesis will be the mean age of patients of CDH is less than 26. The population is less than 26. So left tail, we use the word less than. And then under two tailed, so alternative hypothesis will be the mean age of patient of CDH is not equal to 26. So the population mean is not equal to 26. So we use the word or symbol not equal for two tailed. Level of significance, the decision to reject or to fail. To reject the null hypothesis means significance. It should be based on a set of criterion of judgment. And that is the level of significance or we use the symbol or the value of alpha which is commonly used value of alpha is 1%, 5%, and 
the level of significance is rich when the probability value of obtaining the sample statistic is less than the set level of significance. That is, the test value is less than the critical value. Remember that test value is less than the critical value. So it is also the probability of committing type 1 error. For example, if the null hypothesis is equal to 50, and the alternative hypothesis is not equal to 50, and the test value obtained is 1.45, wherein the critical value is positive and negative 1.96. To illustrate this, since this is not equal, so that means that is two-tailed test. So we have here the rejection unit, the negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. The test value here is less than which is 1.45 is less than to the critical value 1.96. So therefore, our decision is to accept the null hypothesis. Number two example, for this time the test value is 1.65 and the critical value is still positive and negative 1.96. So that's under the two-tailed test. But the test value here is 1.65, which is less than the critical value 1.96. So therefore, the decision is still to accept the null hypothesis. Another example is for this time the test value, the alternative hypothesis for this time is greater than 50. And the test value is 1.97. The critical value is 1.65. So that is a one-tailed test to the right because that is greater than 50. The test value 1.97 here is greater than the critical value, so therefore the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. And another example is alternative hypothesis is greater than 50, but the test value for this time is 1.82, and the critical value is positive and negative 1.96, is still one-tailed, that is to the right, but the test value 1.82 is less than the critical value 1.96. So therefore, the decision is to accept the null hypothesis. Decisions error in hypothesis testing. So we have also decision error in hypothesis testing. The type 1 error is the null hypothesis is rejected when it is true. So you reject that instead of accepting it because it's true so that is type 1 you reject when it is true type 2 error is the null hypothesis is accepted when it is false since it is false it should be rejected but you accept it so that is a type 2 error again for type 1 instead of accepting it you reject it when it is true type Two is instead of rejecting it, you accept it when it is false, even if it is false. Example for type 2 error, it has been established that a particular teaching strategy improves the math performance, the probability value taken from your experiments under the op value of 0 0.05 was 0 0.15. Thus, you did not reject the null hypothesis and concluded that there is no significant difference between the teaching strategy and math performance. So instead of rejecting it, you did not reject, so therefore that is a type 2 error. So again, so these are the decisions error. If the null hypothesis is true, so right decision should be to accept it. But once you reject it, that is a type 1 error. If the null hypothesis is false and you accept it, that is a type 2 error because the right decision should be to reject it because it is false. Okay, for your activity, identify whether the following is the null hypothesis or an alternative hypothesis so that's from number one to five and for activity 1b for each of the following conjecture state the null and the alternative hypothesis 
So this is from 6 to 10. If the given is null, state the alternative hypothesis. If it is alternative, then state the null hypothesis. For activity 1C, identify whether the test hypothesis to be performed is one-tailed or two-tailed. So that's from 11 to 12. State whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. And for activity 2, identify the type of error if there is any committed in each of the following. So that is 1 to 5. State whether it is a type 1 error or type 2 or whether it is true or it is false. Then for activity 3, identify whether the following statements are true or false. So that's 1 to 4, just write true or false. But you're going to analyze the statement given. That's from 1 to 8, identify also if it's true or false, and 9 to 10. For activity 4, decide whether the null hypothesis to be rejected or, uh, or accepted given the test value and the critical value of the test statistics, then you're going to draw the rejection region. So that's from number 1 to 1 and 2. So you're going to draw the rejection unit and then decide whether to reject or accept. Again, that's all for today. So before we end, let me share the quotation according to Enrico Fermi. There are two possible outcomes if the result confirms the hypothesis, then you've made a measurement. If the result is contrary to the hypothesis, then you made a discovery. So again, this is Teacher Riza always saying, stay home and stay safe. Have a nice day. Thank you.